this one is going to be, it's like an F major thing, but kind of a triad thing, so don't panic, take a deep breath, it's all going to be okay. So F major, kind of your classic bar chord. Probably the first one you run into, other than a B major. It's kind of a five string one, but... If you want kind of like easy ways to play that, that's where the triads come in, because you're just taking pieces of that full chord. So this is across all six strings. So we're just going to take sections of that and leave others out. And then you'll still be playing an F major chord. You just won't be doing the whole thing. So if you're like playing an acoustic, you know, maybe you got thicker strings, maybe the action's a little high, having a hard time, and you're finding like your fingers cramping up. Well, you don't have to do that. Kind of the, the first one you could do if you still want to get those like lower notes. Just don't play the B and E strings, the top two. Just the E, A, D, and G string of that chord. So you're not actually pressing down with your whole first finger. You're not doing that capo kind of action. And then what's nice about all of these is that they'll be easier to play. You'll still get that F major chord. The one thing you're going to want to work on is muting the strings you don't want to hear. It was kind of a new sort of challenge maybe where instead of pressing down with this bottom part of my index finger to catch that B and E string, it's lifted slightly, but it's still touching the B and E string slightly so that it's muted. So the rest, So when you're strumming, you don't have to worry about not hitting those strings. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the first one. Another really nice one is, uh, it's kind of a favorite of mine where it's the middle strings. So I'm not playing either of the E's. So basically, I'm taking my index finger, it's on the first fret of the B string, my middle finger is on the second fret of the G, my ring finger is the third fret of the A, so we're skipping over the D, playing the A, my pinky is right underneath on the third fret of the D string, so I'm getting the four middle strings. My index is muting that high E string. So I don't have to worry about that. And my thumb is just coming over the top and just contacting the E, the big E string. So that's happening. So I'm muting both of the strings I don't want to hear. Because otherwise, if you didn't. Not that that's a terrible chord, it's kind of mysterious sounding, but it's probably not what you're going for. But muting those two E strings. Is really nice. And again, like that's not, you're not doing the capo thing with this finger, not wearing it out. So that's a personal favorite. I'll do that one a lot. And then... This one is kind of more what you'll typically see kind of in a beginner book starting out to get that first F chord is uh, your index finger is playing both the B and the E strings on that first fret. Middle finger is playing the second fret of the G. And the 
ring finger is going to do the third fret of the D. So my nail kind of might not be the best. Let me try to mute it. So I might try to flatten my uh, ring finger out. So just past the nail, it's going to be muting that A string. That's a little better. My thumb is going to reach over and mute the big E string. So again, I can strum these two strings. Get a bit of noise, but... This one's not so bad because you can kind of easily target those higher strings just by the angle that you're like strumming on. So those are three nice kind of workarounds on playing that F major chord that's kind of tricky. And again, where the triad the triads come in is you're taking the same notes, you're just playing them in a different order. So this is where it's gonna get a little fancy, but again. You know, take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. We're getting an F note here. We're getting a C note here. Then we're getting an F note again. And then we're getting an A note. Getting another C. And we're getting an F. Which is only three different notes. So you have your root note, your F, your third note is your A, and your fifth is your C. And that root third fifth thing is not as complicated as it sounds because you just have a scale and then you're picking the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of that major scale and that's what's giving you the notes for your chord. So if you play an F major scale, the first note is an F, the third note is an A, so one, two, three, this is an A note, and then four, five is a C, and then if you look, so you remember that, you got your first note, your third note and your fifth note in the F major scale. And if we look again at the notes that we get when we play this chord, F, C, F, A, C, F. It's only those three notes. And when you start playing those different kind of workarounds that I showed, you're getting the same three notes, just sometimes they're in a bit of a different order. So this first one we showed, was the lower four strings so you're getting your F at the bottom the next one it's still an F major chord it's just not starting on an F so it's starting on a C but that doesn't mean it's a C major chord this is still an F major chord and the third one that I showed with the other four strings is like the first one because we're starting on an F note. So that's F major. F major, all six strings. The middle four is F major, that third one. F major. So that is the nice thing about jamming with a band kind of thing where if you are that acoustic player you could do sort of the uh, first one and then if you have an electric guitar player like they could do something again the uh, triad inversions come in because it could be something like uh And what I like about my like personal favorite, those middle four strings, that one. Is 
is if there's a bass player, they're gonna be playing that root note anyways. It's gonna be an octave down from what this is, but they have that low root sound covered. So it's nice that it frees up the guitar players to play the same chord, but in a different way. So it kind of gives things like a nice texture, depth, whatever fancy word you want to use. And yeah, that's uh, probably it for this one. Hopefully it's not too confusing with all that root third, fifth stuff, which really... It's like, you pick a major scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you pick the first note, the third note, and the fifth note, that's going to give you a major chord depending on the scale. So if you hear root third, fifth, like that's kind of like your formula, but... Oh my god, there's a mosquito in here. Well, I don't have to deal with that, but yeah, so your root third fifth. The formula is what's important because if you're playing like G major, for example, you still want to find the first note, the third note, and the fifth note to get your G major chord. If you play A major, you still want your first note, your third note, and your fifth note in that scale of A major to get your A major chord. So, if there's any questions, I'll probably do more videos like in-depth on that and you can ask. And, uh, yeah. Have fun with that, work on that, and again, like, learn the multiple different ways so that you can switch between them, which is another thing. That you can do is like if you're getting tired of playing one if your fingers are sore switch it up you know play a different one still play the chord but you can give your fingers kind of a break from uh how you've been playing it and again in the band context like you know maybe one way of playing that chord is going to work really good on one guitar maybe you want the other guitar to play a different version of it and yeah, having a bass guitar there, like, you don't have to really worry about having your root note in as the lowest note of the chord, because the bass is there. So, yeah. Have fun with that. <laughs>